Like most people, after 9-11, I wanted to do something to help. I'm an entrepreneur, and I had founded two internet companies, but I didn't have any government or military background. Then one night, I saw this. Sergeant First Class Jay Smith, an Afghan kid, playing baseball. It was a TV show on U.S. Special Forces in Afghanistan. When he deployed, Jay took his baseball glove with him to use during his free time. But soon enough, the kids in the village were using it to play catch. Inspired, Jay called his wife and asked her to get enough bats, balls, and mitts so the kids could play a real game. And with donations from family and friends, she bought the gear and sent it to Jay. And then Jay and his soldiers taught the whole village how to play baseball. Well, I thought this was great. Initiative meets generosity. Jay was our ambassador. And that was my light bulb moment. So I tracked down Jay, flew to Fort Bragg, and met with him and his team. I told them the idea. When soldiers needed something to help the local population, they could tell me, and I would use the internet to get people to help. Well, Jay kept saying, this idea will save lives. And he told me that when he was in Afghanistan, the Taliban had been crossing the Pakistan border at night and firing rockets on his soldiers' camp. And then, purely because of the relationship that his soldiers had built with the Afghan villagers, the Afghan villagers formed a night watch patrol to protect our soldiers. And the rocket attacks stopped. Lives were saved. After hearing that, I got started. I learned there are American troops in hot spots from Africa to Southeast Asia. And to improve security and counter extremism, they're helping local communities build capacity in education, healthcare, and public services. And they're doing this work in places where it isn't safe for others to operate. So I came to see our troops as entrepreneurs. They have tremendous initiative, they work on really tough, complex problems in risky areas where things can change very, very quickly. What was missing was venture capital type support fast and flexible resources to help them with whatever humanitarian needs they might have. So I set up a privately funded nonprofit organization called Spirit of America to play that venture capital role, to bring private capital and brain power right down to the front lines. When we were helping our troops help local people in Afghanistan and Africa, we hit a huge problem. Military attorneys said what we were doing was illegal. They said that if a soldier told us that an Afghan woman needed a sewing machine to provide for her family, that was an improper solicitation of gifts that violated ethics regulations. Crazy. So military regulations had created a closed system that prohibited the collaboration that could save lives. And this was no good. So with the Department of Defense General Counsel, the four-star commander of US Central Command, we got it fixed. And about a year ago, a new military regulation, CCR 2714, was created that opened the system for the first time ever. And then we put Spirit of America staff down on the ground with the troops. You can think of them as an embedded venture capitalist. And the job of our embedded VC is to understand what humanitarian problems the troops and their local partners are trying to solve and how we can help. Then we use crowdsourcing to get whatever capital and know-how is needed. So people donate to specific projects using our website, and we assemble experts into virtual advisory boards. And there are hundreds of examples with, with thousands of, of different supporters, and I'll, I'll give you a few. In West Africa, we're helping an army captain and his team radically improve livestock health so that local people have more milk, more meat, and more money. And this makes it harder for extremist groups like Al-Qaeda of the Islamic Maghreb to use poverty as a recruiting tool. In Tajikistan, an army sergeant and his team wanted to help a remote mountain village that had been the center of an Islamist insurgency. We provided solar lighting for the school and village health clinic and winter coats and medicines to help the kids get through the winter when mortality rates usually jump. And this helped our soldiers build influence and reduce the potential of future conflict. In Afghanistan, we helped a platoon leader and his Marines 
dispel years of Taliban propaganda, and improve relations with teenage boys that were targets for recruitment by the insurgents. So our embedded VC set up a video conference between an Afghan school the Marines had built and a school in Los Angeles. And it was the, the first time that the Afghan teenagers who live in mud homes and don't have any electricity, the first time those teenagers had any interaction with American teenagers. And the connection across radically different cultures was one of the most remarkable and hopeful things I've ever seen. Attendance at the Afghan school doubled in just one week, and a conclusion I reached was that teenagers may be the best soft power in the world. So when you think of our troops as fighting a war, what you can do is limited. I've come to understand that our troops are working on peace. The goal is peace. And there, we can help a lot. So when we invest in the initiative and the courage of our men and women on the front lines, the people at or near the bottom of this whole thing, we unlock their potential to do great things. We make them safer, more successful, and the local people, when they're safer and more secure, they can better build the future that they want. And this approach works with civilian personnel too, the State Department, USAID, Peace Corps, and it can work anywhere. It's not just for America. It works because it's decentralized and it's local and it's personal. So my goal is that whenever our country sends our men and women to serve abroad, the private sector and people like us are right there by their side to support their humanitarian work and increase their soft power. And when we do that, we'll have less war and more peace. Thank you.